The article, Race and Method of Suicide, Culture and Opportunity by Stephen Stack and Ira Wasserman, illustrates the idea that different methods of suicide are preferred among different social groups. This will be discussed further in the presentation. The thesis statement that the authors, Stack and Wasserman, provided is African Americans form a subculture of violence and are more exposed to violence, so they are expected to choose violent methods of suicide. The research has studied the link between choice of suicide method and race from two different perspectives, those being differential socio-acceptability and differential availability, which vary together. The data was compiled from the 1990 mortality file of the U.S. Public Health Service containing information from 19,580 male suicides. The authors noted that for a method to become the predominant choice, that the accessibility needed to be combined with high social acceptability. It was then that the data was then measured and used to either confirm or deny the author's hypothesis. The research on the acceptability of suicide has been studied before, with a focus on the assumption that a certain method is acceptable only to extent that the group would use the method. However, this past research does not include important variables, such as cultural data and public opinion. Most past data has not included sociocultural acceptability of different methods either. The role of race when selecting a suicide method has also been greatly neglected by previous studies. There have been associations made before with race and suicide method, but they fail to include characteristics such as economic class. This newer study aims at national studies instead of just local samples, which will control the different characteristics that were otherwise ignored in the past. There were three different research sec sections that were used to help the researchers conclude. Those three sections were differential exposure and desensitization to violence, African American subculture to violence, and socioeconomic status. The first category was used because of the rates of homicide. It was known that African Americans were generally five times more likely to experience a homicide compared to Caucasians. On top of that, there are usually more homicide predators and victims in African American communities. African Americans were more susceptible to homicide violence, in turn, desensitizing them. Their subculture of violence was also used because of the increased behaviors, attitudes, values, beliefs, and norms that are relevant to violent behavior. Finally, socioeconomic class was used because of poverty rates, unemployment rates, segregation, family structure, and so socialization practices revealed that they were more apt to externalize their aggression. These factors often led to violence. There is an assumption that the acceptability of suicide is somewhat dependent on how often that method is used in a particular culture. However, there has been no actual data to prove this point. This study does not focus on the acceptability of certain methods of suicide within a culture, rather the availability of certain methods, such as violent weapons. There are interrelated aspects of African American social life that the study covers in order to try to prove that the hypothesis that African Americans were predisposed to violent forms of suicide. For starters, African Americans have a higher homicide rate, that of a ratio of 5.5 to 1 as of 1993. Another survey indicates that African Americans were more likely to respond affirmatively to certain violent things that they may have experienced. Another thing to be focused on is the availability of firearms. A majority of male suicides are committed with firearms. Also from the same source came that the idea that African Americans are less likely to own firearms, contrary to the hypothesis. Since firearm involvement in male suicide is dominant, the availability factor may cancel out the violent social acceptability factor, but may cause African Americans to turn to other violent means of suicide. Data was collected from the U.S. Public Health Service, and method of suicide was dispersed according to the categories that were available from the department, recognizing 43 different methods of suicide. In the actual study, they were separated between nonviolent and violent means of suicide as the dependent variable. Violent methods of suicide were compared to means of execution that are also considered violent. 
This may include firearms, hanging, suffocation, and jumping. Included but not limited to in the nonviolent area were drug-related deaths or poison inhalation. In order to test specifically between race and suicide, controls such as education and socioeconomic status were used. The survey showed that Caucasians are more likely to own a firearm, but African Americans were more likely to have been exposed to violence with them. The study has created a framework for the question whether African Americans have more violent suicides than Caucasians. The factors that aided this hypothesis included greater exposure to violence and greater impoverishment in African Americans. Due to this study, the hypothesis was found to be true as African Americans are 2.24 times more likely to use violent means of suicide. However, it is important to read and interpret the results carefully. You can interpret the results in these three ways. The African American subculture of violence, greater numbers to violence, or the fact that African Americans have more exposure to violence. Any combination of these variables could explain the correlation between race and violence but it could also be said that they might not be associated at all. Race and violence may also be connected in the terms of behavior causing behavior. This simply means that deviant behavior occurs mainly because people see their peers also showing deviant behavior. Included in the research is also the idea of Southern violence. Southerners were found to have a higher amount of violent deaths, but the variables are largely different when talking geographic wise due to the fact that it's easier for Southerners to get a firearm. However, to study the weight of the importance of gun availability versus cultural lethal violence is beyond the scale of this study and we need to be focused on separately. There are some concerns that relate to having up-to-date social information that might affect views on suicide nowadays. This study might be improved if there was more accurate information considered in modern times. Also, males were the only participants in this study, and it might be more beneficial to include other genders as well, while remaining in the same age range, likewise to education level and socioeconomic status. There are also a variety of reasons people may commit suicide, so that might be a difficult way to test violent versus nonviolent methods. Just because a person uses a more violent method does not necessarily correlate to race or cultural acceptance of the motive.